Consider the stars, so small, so unfathomable, so beautiful in the night sky. How do we understand this love for what, is, what we always see in the stars, what is always just out of reach? How, how do we get there? We go to the moon and try to learn. We send rockets to Saturn's moon Titan to learn what our planet might have been like when the solar system was created. We want to learn. We want to understand because we are in love. I think everyone loves the moon. We hear of romance under the moonlight. I remember looking at the moon through my telescope when I was six years old. And historically, scientifically, I think everyone was transfixed to their televisions or radios when man first landed on the moon. There, there seemed to be a moment of awe, an inspiration, and amazement when there was that one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Scientists have deduced, in trying to guess how this planet got a moon and how necessary it is for our weather patterns, that when the moon was first formed, one theory was that it was formed off of a rogue planet that collided with Earth, that the moon was first much, much closer to Earth when it was first formed that, than it is today. And it was actually maybe only 14,000 miles away. And it is not that current, almost 240,000 mile distance that it is now. Astronomers now estimate that because of gravity's change, the moon every year is a mile and a half farther away from our Earth. So if you remember the moon looking so big when you looked at it in the night sky when you were little, well, you may have been right. Laurie Anderson, while studying with NASA as their artist in residence, learned that scientists at NASA during the Cold War and during this country's desire for nuclear testing, they considered test sending off and setting off nuclear bombs on the dark side of the moon. Because, you see, no one sees that side of the moon, and the radiation would be a safe distance from the Earth. And when I heard that, I thought, what would setting nuclear explosions on half of the moon do to its orbit? And what would that do to its effect on the weather? And, and consider the earthquake that caused the tsunami in Asia. That actually slowed the rotation of the planet for a second. So would explosions on the moon affect our rotation or possibly our orbit? And then I thought, why would anyone ever want to destroy a heavenly body we so need and so don't know enough about? Why would anyone want to destroy something that so many people are so infatuated with, that so many people revere? Astronomy is like a forbidden love affair, something you can never reach, but something you can always admire from afar, something whose constancy gives you hope, even if you're only standing outside in the middle of the night, looking up at its perennial beauty without ever knowing if you would ever get there.